Hey everyone, and welcome to our deep dive today. We're going to be tackling something a lot of you have been asking about, um, mRNA vaccines. Yeah. And it feels like these shots kind of came out of nowhere, right? It really does seem that way. Like they were suddenly just thrust upon us. Exactly. But of course, there's a much bigger story here. One that goes way beyond, you know, the headlines of the past few years. Definitely. So if you ever wondered how these vaccines actually work, like what's going on at the cellular level. Right. Or what makes this technology you know, so groundbreaking, then you've come to the right place. What I think is so captivating about mRNA vaccines is that they really do represent decades of research and setbacks mm. and those incredible breakthroughs that just totally changed the world. Yeah, I'm definitely ready to dive into the history here. Mm -hmm. I feel like most of us probably remember all the buzz around mRNA vaccines during the, uh, you know, the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. Right. But it sounds like this story starts long before that. Oh, absolutely. We need to rewind all the way back to 1961. Wow. <laughs> when scientists first discovered messenger RNA, or mRNA... Okay. Now, to understand why that was such a big deal, let's just refresh on some cell biology basics. Okay, my all ears. So imagine DNA as this master blueprint, right? And it's stored inside each of our cells. This blueprint contains all the instructions our cells need to function. But the DNA itself doesn't directly build anything. Okay, so what the That's where RNA comes in. Got it, got it. You can think of RNA as the courier, the messenger, that carries copies of those DNA instructions to the parts of the cell that build proteins. Right. And proteins, well, they're the real workhorses of our bodies. They're carrying out all sorts of essential tasks. So DNA's got the instructions, and then RNA is like the delivery service, like getting those instructions to where they need to go. Precisely. Okay. Now, this discovery of mRNA back in 1961, that was huge. I mean, it even earned scientists a Nobel Prize a few years later. Wow. Researchers realized that if they could somehow harness this messenger, this mRNA, they could potentially deliver specific instructions to our cells. <laughs> instructions to build... Well, almost anything. Okay, I see where this is going. It's like hacking into the cell's communication system. Yeah. Did scientists immediately think about vaccines when they, they in quickly. made this discovery? That's exactly right. The idea of using mRNA for vaccines and therapies did seem remarkably straightforward, at least in theory, right? Yeah. I mean, imagine being able to deliver instructions that would tell our cells how to build a defense against a specific virus. We could essentially teach our bodies how to fight off infections before they even take hold. That's incredible. It sounds almost too good to be true. Right. There must have been some hurdles along the way. You're absolutely right. Despite the initial excitement early attempts to use mRNA for vaccines and therapies faced, well, they faced some significant challenges. What kind of challenges? What went wrong? Well, one of the biggest obstacles was figuring out how to deliver that mRNA into the body and into the right cells without it getting broken down too quickly. Oh, I see. It's like trying to deliver this really fragile package through a chaotic maze. Yeah. And then on top of that... And I'm guessing it wasn't just about delivery. Gross. Did the body sometimes reject this, like Fine. synthetic mRNA? Exactly. Sometimes the body reacted really poorly to this lab-made mRNA, caused inflammation, and actually made things worse. It seemed like the immune system was incredibly sensitive, and it rejected this foreign mRNA like it was an unwelcome guest. So we've got this incredibly promising technology that could, like, totally revolutionize medicine, but then our own immune systems are like, nope. Not today. It's true. It's like our bodies have this really effective security system in place. Yeah. So what happened next? Did anyone ever figure out how to, like, get past those defenses? That is where our story takes a really fascinating turn. Two scientists, Catalin Carrico and Drew Weissman, they were determined to figure out a way to make mRNA work therapeutically. <laughs> Carrico, she's a biochemist, and she had been, like, captivated by mRNA's potential for years. And Weissman, he's an immunologist, and he brought his expertise on the immune system, specifically dendritic cells, to the table. Dendritic cells, okay, so what makes them so important to this whole thing? Dendritic cells, they're like the sentinels of our immune system, right? Okay. They patrol our bodies, they're on the lookout for anything suspicious. Right. And if they encounter something that seems dangerous, you know, like a virus or a bacteria, they capture it, they break it down, and then they present these little fragments of it to other immune cells and are like, hey, everyone, be on the lookout for this bad guy. So they're like the intelligence officers of the immune system gathering intel and then like sounding the alarm. 
That's a great way to put it. So Carrico and Weissman, they were particularly interested in how dendritic cells responded to mRNA. They knew that if they could understand this interaction, they might be able to find a way to prevent the immune system from, you know, freaking out over the synthetic mRNA. Okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I can see why their collaboration would be so important. What did they end up discovering? So their pivotal moment came in 2005, and they were studying how these dendritic cells reacted to different types of mRNA. Okay. And they noticed something really intriguing, natural mRNA, the kind that's found in our cells. It didn't trigger the strong immune response in the dendritic cells, but then synthetic mRNA, the kind made in the lab, that set off alarm bells, it triggered this whole cascade of inflammation. So like the dendritic cells could tell the difference between the natural and the synthetic mRNA. Exactly. Interesting. So what was causing that? That is the million dollar question. Yeah. So Carrico and Weissman, they dug a little deeper and they discovered that the answer lay in this tiny little detail. Okay. They found that natural mRNA contains these really subtle chemical modifications, almost like little flags or markers that signal to the immune system like, hey, I'm supposed to be here. Don't attack. Oh, so it's like the natural mRNA had some kind of secret password that let it get past all the immune system's defenses. Exactly. And here's the even more remarkable part. Carrico and Weissman, they figured out how to add these same chemical modifications to synthetic mRNA, essentially camouflaging it, making it look more like the natural mRNA. Wow, that's brilliant. Just this <laughs> tiny little tweak, but with like massive implications. So that actually worked. It did. By incorporating these natural modifications, like right into that mRNA creation process, they were able to significantly reduce that inflammatory response to the synthetic mRNA. Wow. I mean, it was a total game changer. It really does sound like they found this like missing puzzle piece. Okay. So now that we understand the science behind it, I'm curious, how did this all play into that race for a COVID-19 vaccine? Well, this, my friend, is where the story goes from just fascinating to absolutely incredible. So we've got this breakthrough, right? Scientists can basically create mRNA that doesn't set off like all those alarms in our immune systems. It's true. And I'm guessing that was like a really big deal when the whole COVID-19 pandemic hit. Oh, absolutely. When the world was suddenly faced with this, well, this brand new virus. Right. Karkiko and Weissman's discovery, even though it was years earlier, it proved to be absolutely crucial. I bet everyone was like desperate for a vaccine. So did their work directly lead to, you know, the ones that we have today, the mRNA ones? It did. Both the Pfizer BioNTech and the Moderna COVID-19 vaccines, they relied on this key finding, you know, those base modifications that allow that mRNA to kind of slip past the immune system's defenses. So it's like they figured out how to deliver those vaccine instructions without the immune system even realizing what was happening. Exactly. They basically found a way to, like, disguise it. That's wild. It really shows you how important all this scientific research is, even if we don't see what it'll be used for right away. Absolutely. I mean, it often takes years, even decades sometimes. Right. Exactly. And this whole mRNA technology it's not just about COVID-19, is it? That's the most exciting part. What's so cool about mRNA is that it has this potential to revolutionize how we treat and prevent like all sorts of diseases, not just viruses. Like what, what else could it be used for? Oh, wow. Scientists are looking into mRNA therapies for so many things. Cancer, Zika virus, even MERS. Seriously? Yeah. Imagine using mRNA to train our immune systems to like recognize and destroy cancer cells. Wow. Or to deliver these therapeutic proteins directly to damaged tissues. The possibilities are just, they're vast. That is definitely what I call ending on a high note. That's amazing. It sounds like we're seeing like the very beginning of a total medical revolution. But hopefully, I mean, if mRNA has the potential to do all of this incredible stuff. Yeah. Are there any limitations? You know, like what are the big question marks that scientists are still trying to figure out? Well, that's the thing about science, isn't it? Yeah. There's always more to learn and discover. But one of the biggest challenges right now is figuring out how to target mRNA to specific cells and tissues even more effectively. Oh. We want to ensure that mRNA is delivering those instructions to the right address, so to speak. That makes sense. We wouldn't want those instructions ending up at the wrong place. All right. Are there any other big mysteries that researchers are trying to solve? Yeah. I mean, another really important area of research is, you know, understanding the long term effects of mRNA therapies. Right. Of course. I mean, the initial results have been really, really promising. Right. But we do need to continue to monitor these therapies and just make sure they're safe and effective over time. So it sounds like while there's still a lot to learn, 
The future of mRNA is incredibly promising. Absolutely. I'm so excited to see what the future holds. Me too. It's pretty inspiring to think about all the possibilities. Well, thanks for uh, for taking us on this deep dive into the world of mRNA vaccines. Of course, it's been my pleasure. It's definitely clear that this is just the beginning of a very, very exciting story.